A blessed good day to you all, and welcome to this weekly teaching podcast brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands. I am the Reverend Angela Bosfield Palacios, and it is my joy to share in this learning experience with you. I should like to suggest that you get a piece of paper and a pen to write what the Holy Spirit may whisper to you while I am speaking, and to be able to participate in any written exercises. We are still in the Leadership and Ministry series, and today we are considering our Anglican heritage. When we consider the balance of our Catholic and Reformed heritages, we have a balanced heritage. When it comes to our worship, when you think of worship, exalting God as we give ourselves to God in love. Jewish worship, for example, if you read Acts chapter 10, involved psalms and canticles, lessons and preaching much as some of our services contain. The early church, we are told in Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47, and reading from the New International Version, I quote, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. And then in Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, Again, from the New International Version, I read, Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Christ was always at the center. And it is by the power of the Holy Spirit that we worship in spirit and in truth and are gradually transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. The Catholic tradition is the original universal faith of the one holy Catholic Church. This faith was practiced in the East as the Orthodox version and in the West as the Roman Catholic version. The Reformed tradition began as a protest against the denomination and of the domination and the excesses which persons like Martin Luther and John Calvin perceived to be corrupting worship. The Lutheran, Presbyterian, and later Baptist churches became known as Protestants because of this protest. Anglican worship is worship that evolved in the Church of England, which retained the doctrines of the universal or Catholic tradition, but embraced some of the practices of the Reformed tradition and introduces its own Book of Common Prayer written in the language of the people. The Church of England in 1549, the year of the first Book of Common Prayer, which was produced, remained true to the teaching of the undivided Church, so there is no new Anglican doctrine. So, let us consider a little more closely these traditions. The Catholic tradition. The most obvious aspects that we see when we enter an Anglican or a Roman Catholic church are, first of all, the vestments and altar linens to offer visual aids of seasons. The statues to enable us to identify with saints worth emulating. Three, the pulpit and the lectern on either side to proclaim the word. Number four, 
the altar in the middle to draw attention to the Eucharist. The sanctuary lamp indicates reserved sacrament. We consume all of the elements because of the real presence. And in benediction, we celebrate the body of Christ in a beautifully mystical setting. Number five, the crucifix is in a prominent place with the veneration of the cross on Good Friday and stations of the cross during Lent. And we have candles, incense, holy water, and bells all appealing to the senses in different services. More importantly, we share the same teachings. The focus on the seven sacraments, baptism, Eucharist, confirmation, marriage, ordination, penance, and holy unction. Not just the first two of baptism and Eucharist, as in Protestant teaching. Then we have together the centrality of the Eucharist with the celebration of the Eucharist daily and several times on Sunday. In our Catholic tradition, we have infant baptism, introducing every member of the household to the Christian faith from the earliest age. We have the apostolic ministry of the orders of bishops, priests, and deacons. We have the apostolic succession with our ordinations being traced back to the original ordination of St. Peter by our Lord Jesus Christ. And we have the ordered liturgies in the prayer book and the use of the lectionary, the monastic discipline of the daily office. Now, when it comes to the reformed tradition, the teaching that we share, first of all, there is an emphasis on the Word of God so that almost 90% of the Book of Common Prayer is based on biblical material. Though the pulpit has not replaced the altar in the center of the sanctuary as in Protestant churches, there is an emphasis on preaching and teaching especially now as we have sermons at Christmas and Easter, there was a time when the liturgy was to tell the story instead of having sermons on those feast days. We have the reading of personally owned copies of the Bible written in the language of the people, for us, which is English. We have services in English and not Latin. Our service is less pre-centered with the people participating by reading lessons, doing intercessions, and assisting with the chalice and even preaching at times. We have married clergy, whereas Roman Catholic priests are called to celibacy and we have female priests and bishops in certain provinces. In conclusion then, we have the Jewish tradition from the Old Testament, the early Christian church tradition from the New Testament, the Catholic tradition, the Reform or Protestant tradition, and we now have added the contemporary or charismatic tradition with praise and worship choruses, liturgical dance, and renewal weekends such as Discovery, Casio, Faith Alive, and other such weekends, along with the indigenous blends of musical instruments, for example, steel drums in some services, and liturgies around the Anglican Communion. There are a variety of instruments used. The church is continually being reformed. Secondly, the point is to offer forms of worship that give honor to God and that our people relate to in the various generations. 
we preserve the tradition and introduce variety. We need to be proud of our mixed and balanced Anglican heritage. May you worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness and be prepared to worship God without ceasing for all eternity with the angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven. I invite you to take a moment to reflect on these different aspects of our tradition. Of course, other traditions are varied as well, making changes to their practice. And so we're all evolving in some very interesting ways. I give you a moment of silence and then I invite you to write your thoughts and feelings about what you have heard. What stands out clearly in your mind? Did you learn anything new? Has God spoken to you in a new way? Do you have a greater appreciation for what you have? I invite you now to join me in prayer. Gracious and holy God, we are so privileged to come into your presence in this special way in prayer. We thank you, Lord, for the visual aids that we use in worship, for our vestments and altar linens and our statues, for the fact that the pulpit and the lectern indicate the importance of the word and the altar in the center, indicating the importance of your sacrifice for us on the cross, Lord, and inviting us to this special meal. We thank you, Lord, for the crucifix that reminds us of that sacrifice and the candles and holy water and other aspects of our faith that allow us to taste and see and experience, to smell and to feel, to touch our faith. We thank you, Lord, for the sacraments that enable us to remember that you are with us in these special moments baptism and Eucharist, confirmation and marriage, ordination, penance when we confess, and holy unction when we receive the blessings of the church, the anointing with oil for healing, and of course the last rites, which are a part of that when death is imminent. We thank you, Lord, for the reformed aspects of our faith. We thank you for the teachings and the fact that Long ago, our services were in the vernacular in English and that Bibles were made available to our people and that our lay people participate in all aspects of worship except the consecration. And we thank you, Lord, that we are able to have the choice to be married or celibate. And of course, I thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being an ordained person in ministry. And so in all these ways, we thank you, Lord, for all of these things that we enjoy and so often take for granted. We ask, Lord, that we may teach our children what it is that we celebrate as Anglicans and that we may help them to appreciate the rich heritage that they are able to inherit. We ask, O oh Lord, that we may be faithful and that we may be grateful, and that we may be respectful of others, and that we all celebrate the one God, the one Lord, the one faith 
the one baptism. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening. Please share with others this weekly podcast teaching from the Anglican Diocese of the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands. This is the Reverend Angela Bosfield Palacios. May God bless you.